this uh, 62 year old woman who had total hysterectomy and bilateral ophorectomy uh, two, uh, four days ago. So presented with uh, symptoms of the lower abdomen, lower abdominal pain, tenderness, feeling unwell, fever, and further evaluation with a CT scan was done. So let's have a look, let's have a general look in the abdomen. Uh, let's use the pulmonary window and we can see some tiny gas bubbles here. This is free air in the abdomen. This can be explained uh, from the recent operation. Okay, but uh, anyway, free air in the abdomen even after operation could be caused by accidental injury to the gastrointestinal tract. So, close follow-up is recommended. So, free air in the abdomen. These are multiple cysts in the liver, which are chronic. And let's go down to see the findings. I will scroll the images down to uh, make your impression. Okay. So, let's start. First of all, there is a generalized blurring of the intraperitoneal mesenteric fat. There is fat stranding everywhere. There are some traces of fluid and here and there, all these are traces of fluid and there are some, and here, and there are some locules of fluid like this. This is uh, anteriorly to the rectum. This is another fluid locule. And I would like to mention here that in emergency CT scans, the patients do not receive any oral contrast. So the bowels are not opacified and it is quite difficult to separate and uh, discriminate some locules of fluid and uh, abscesses and collections uh, from the adjacent bowel. So you must be familiarized with cases like this. It's very often that uh, uh, findings like this are missed. So here we have a collection, there is no uh, continuity with any of the bowel here and here, there is something separate, it is adjacent to this bowel loop but there is no physical continuation. This is the urinary bladder, contains a gas bubble, probably due to previous catheterization. Let's go on the right side, we can see some traces of fluid together with fat stranding and there are another two collections here with gas inclusions. One is here and the other is here. We will have a look in coronal and sagittal views as well. So free fluid, traces of fluid, multiple uh, fluid locules, collections, and you can see another one just here. This is bowel, this is a small collection. You see that if we scroll the images, the bowel continues this way here, but this is something separate. 
This is a very good example. I will zoom in and show it again. So this is a small collection. This is a bowel loop. We scroll the images and we can see that there is continuity to the left. And this structure stands alone. Let's see these collections here in coronal and in sagittal. Coronal view. This is one collection adjacent to a bowel loop here. Here is bowel. Here is the small collection with gas inclusion. And uh, this is best seen in sagittal. This one. I will show you in sagittal. So this area is the collection and here is the bowel loop. There is some separation, not very easy to be identified, but anyway this is the difficulty of uh, this uh, investigation very good idea to use all the three axes, the transverse, the sagittal and the coronal. It's very useful. So if there is any doubt, for example here, we have some doubt. Is it by a loop or a collection? Okay, the best way is to have a look in sagittal view. And we can see that there is some separation. Between the bowel loop and the collection. You see, the collection here is much more clear. Surrounded by fat stranding. Another interesting finding is that there are some mural changes in multiple small and large bowel loops, reactive changes due to peritonitis. There is some wall thickening. Here is again a good example of a collection adjacent to the sigmoid colon. I will scroll the images to see it again. It is adjacent uh, laterally to the urinary bladder and in contact with the sigmoid colon. You see there is no uh, physical continuation of this structure to any uh, bowel loop. So this is a collection. I would like to tell you that uh, if there are multiple structures like this, it's uh, much more easier to suspect that uh, there are collections here. But if you have only one, it's a little difficult to make your final decision. So the aim of for this video was to be familiarized uh, to easily identify intra-abdominal collections abscesses. Dear friends, thank you very much for watching. And uh, don't forget again that uh, in postoperative changes, if you see free air in the abdomen, like in this case, of course, if it is uh, within a week, uh, these gas bubbles probably represent uh, postoperative changes, which is normal. But the differential diagnosis should always include. Uh, accidental bowel perforation. Thank you for watching. 
If you like my videos, please consider to subscribe to my channel so you will be notified the next time I will upload a new video in uh, an interesting case in radiology. Thank you for your support. See you the next time soon.